Okay, this is re meiosis and recombination in less than five minutes. Okay, uh, just real briefly, meiosis, the point of meiosis is to uh, actually um, go through recombination for exchange of genetic material between the maternal and paternal uh, uh, genetic material of a certain individual. That exchange occurs, that's recombination, crossing over, and then you produce a haploid uh, gamete that has only 23 chromosomes, and so that whenever they combine with another gamete, you're going to have a total of 46 chromosomes, which is normal for a human being. So meiosis uh, one, one of the one of the general things about meiosis one is that you're going to have DNA synthesis exclusively in meiosis one. That does not occur in meiosis two. Uh, you're also going to have recombination of a uh, and a homolog pairing in meiosis one. In meiosis two, uh, this is going to produce the final product, the uh, 23 chromosome haploid n equals 23 there uh, daughter cells. Uh, these these daughter cells are going to be the gametes. Uh, so back to meiosis one, the details of meiosis one, you're going to have pairing of homologous chromosomes. These are the same chromosomes, one from paternally inherited, one from maternally inherited. Uh, the correct pairing is going to affect recombination and genetic material uh, distribution. Recombination is actually the genetic material being reproduced. Uh, there are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase for both meiosis one and two. We only need to know the details of prophase one in meiosis one. So let's uh, dive right into that. First of all, you're gonna have pairing of homologous chromosomes. This is leptatine, leptatine. So you have these homologous chromosomes here. They have sister chromatids and they're gonna combine. They're, uh, they're um, lined up with the centromere. The bivalent and tetrad begin to form. Synapsis begins to form. I'm just gonna page down here. Let's go to zygotine. Zygotine means that they're zipped together. You have two homologous chromosomes, which are pairs of sister chromatids that are gonna be zipped together. And uh, this uh, synaptonymal complex means that synapsis is over and it's ready for recombination. Pactatine and diplatine are the third and fourth stages. And in these stages, crossing over actually occurs between non-sister chromatids. So the uh, gray and the red are non-sister chromatids. The two grays are not gonna exchange material. They don't need to. We need genetic exchange between paternal and maternal inherited genes. Uh, diakinesis is the final stage. Uh, in this stage, it's uh, the most condensed. You can visually recognize the chiasmata, the points of crossing over, um, and the homologous chromosomes. You can see down here, this is the chiasmata, this X point. And you can see an actual uh, chromosome crossing over here. Now, the difference between mitosis and meiosis as far as kinetochores is that the kinetochores in meiosis one are actually lined up in parallel. They're not gonna try to pull the sister chromatid apart. They're gonna try to keep them together. So they're in parallel, they're rotated 90 degrees in parallel, and in mitosis, they're actually gonna pull the sister chromatids apart. So that's all uh, from meiosis one, and uh, you're actually gonna have meiosis two, which is exactly like mitosis, so we're not gonna go into details here. And if you can see here, this is a two N uh, original item that you start with um, in meiosis one. You're gonna produce four N divided into two, two N progeny, uh, for meiosis 1 and then the 2N is going to be taken by meiosis 2 and put into an N23 uh, chromosome product. That's gametogenesis. Gametogenesis is spermatogenesis and oogenesis. And basically what's going on here, the differences, oogenesis, you're going to have one original cell that matures into a single original cell and three polar bodies. Um, also there's two arrest cycles. One is going to be in the diplotene stage of prophase 1 and the cells, the oocytes, will not come out of that arrest cycle until after puberty. After puberty, they will uh, arrest in metaphase two, and they won't come out of that until fertilization. Um, in spermatogenesis, you have one original cell that's gonna produce four gametes. Um, in oogenesis, all, a female is born with all of the oocytes that they're gonna have during their entire life, but with spermatogenesis, males are constantly making new sperm. Those are major differences. Let's go ahead and move on to non-disjunction. Non-disjunction is basically uh, it's going to produce aneuploidy gametes. That means you're going to have an that means you're going to have gametes that do not have the appropriate amount of chromosomes. There's going to be repeats in there. That's non-disjunction. Something happened in meiosis that was uh, wrong or mitosis that produced these aneuploidy gametes. So we need to remember seven of these. DEP. This is trisomy 21, 18, and 13. Downs, Edwards, and Pateaus. Then we move on to the non-autosomal, which uh, this is the sex-linked ones. And you're gonna have Kleinfelters, um, which is an extra X in male, XXY, triple X, XXX female, trisomy, Turner, uh, one less X in female, and uh, XYY, extra X in males. The details are covered in another lecture. So let's just uh, go over this real quick, the, the differences. Meiosis and meiosis involve, or meiosis involves uh, two cell divisions. The product is haploid, and uh, they're genetically different because of recombination. Prophase one is much longer, and kinetochore behavior is different. Thank you.